This is the story called The Bantam and the Soldier, written by Jennifer Beck, illustrations by Robin Belton. It is wartime. In the midst of the fighting and devastation, an unusual friendship is formed. Let's find out more. On the outskirts of a village in France, an elderly farmer kept a flock of bantams in his barn. Among them was young one bantam, who was sometimes pecked by the others. Food was scarce, and they would not always let her share the grain the farmer threw them. It was wartime. The old stone barn echoed to the sounds of heavy tanks rolling past, and to the beat of soldiers' boots as regiment after regiment marched towards the battlefield just over the hill. The rattle of machine gun fire and the flash of shells exploding in the distance had been part of the Bantam's life from the very beginning. She had grown used to the sounds of war. She was more afraid of the sharp beaks and claws of some of her barnyard companions. The battle spread towards the village. When the smell of gunpowder began to drift across the farmyard, the farmer herded together his best animals and prepared to drive them to safer land further south. As he did not have enough room for the bantams, the farmer opened the barn door and left them to fend for themselves. The bantams fossicked in the farmyard during the day and returned to the barn to roost in the evening. That is, all except the smallest bantam. She kept apart from the others, foraging in nearby fields and sleeping at night under an overgrown hedge by the roadside. One night, there was a deafening explosion. A stray shell had landed near the farmyard. The barn collapsed into a heap of broken beams and jumbled stones. Then, there was silence. Only the bantam under the hedge survived, but in the blast she was thrown amongst the branches and could not struggle free. It happened that the very next morning a company of soldiers marched through the village towards the battlefield. They had come from a country on the other side of the world to join their allies. In those days they called it the Great War and believed it was the war that would end all wars. The soldiers had been marching for many hours. There were signs of relief when they were allowed to rest for a while by the roadside. One of the youngest among them was a farmer's son called Arthur. He loved farm life and until a year before had travelled no further than a hundred miles from home. In war-torn Europe he often felt homesick and afraid, but tried not to show it. The older soldiers teased him enough, as it was for his shyness and quiet country ways. Sitting slightly apart from the others, Arthur took out a postcard to send to his family back home. He was thinking about his young niece, who liked to visit the farm during these school holidays. Arthur had just written, Give my love to Bertha, when he saw a movement in the hedge. It was the bantam trapped between branches and by then too weak to make a sound. Oh, hello there. What are you doing stuck in the bushes? Arthur thought. Take it easy, little one, Arthur whispered as he cradled the quivering bird in his hands and eased her gently through the tangle of thorns. Just then, the officer in charge shouted, Time's up, men! And the soldiers struggled reluctantly to their feet and began to line up on the road. Hurry up there, the officer ordered when he noticed Arthur standing facing the hedge. What was Arthur to do? Hastily, he unbuttoned his thick khaki uniform and slipped the little bantam inside his jacket. That evening, Arthur fed the bantam some food he had saved. 
The other soldiers shook their heads and laughed at him. What's the use of keeping that miserable looking bird? One of them demanded. It's so scrawny, it wouldn't even make a decent bowl of soup. If it starts crowing in the night, I'll wring its skinny neck, warned another. Her name is Bertha, replied Arthur, and she needs someone to look after her. At first, life in the trenches was not so bad. Arthur was able to share his food with Bertha, and she grew stronger. The soldiers stopped teasing Arthur and began to look upon Bertha as a lucky mascot. They even helped him build a pen for her. But the fighting grew heavier. Food became scarce, and Arthur and his companions collected grubs and worms for Bertha from the muddy banks of their clay prison. And she rewarded them. In the midst of a raging battle, when the sky was crisscrossed with fire, Bertha laid a warm brown egg. When Arthur found it, he hugged the little bantam to his mud-caked jacket. Every morning from then on, as regular as daybreak, Bertha laid an egg for Arthur and his friends. They shared the eggs, a treat for those who were most in need. During the terrible weeks that followed, the bantam gave them something to joke about. A hen in the trench is worth five on the farm, they'd say, or an egg a day keeps the shell shock away. Above all, Bertha gave the soldiers courage and hope. If a bantam can live through this and lay eggs as well, they told one another, then perhaps we can survive this terrible war. At last, the battlefront moved north and the fighting began to draw to an end. Arthur and his remaining companions were able to clamber out of the waterlogged trenches and make their way back towards the camp across the mile or so of territory they had won. When the soldiers had begun to recover their strength and it was time to leave, they pleaded to be allowed to take Bertha home with them. Sorry, replied the officer, we've a long way to go. You must leave her here. A few days later, those who were left of Arthur's regiment once again marched past the farmyard. The farmer had returned and was unloading his cart. Bertha had grown and was now able to look after herself. Arthur lifted the bantam out from under his jacket and each of his comrades, in turn, said goodbye to her. Arthur was last. He whispered, Thank you, Bertha. May you now live in freedom and peace, and gently set her down among the puppies that grew in the field beside the hedge. Many months later, the soldiers left Europe on a troop ship for home. When they finally sailed into the harbour, the wharf was crowded with people waiting to welcome them. Arthur's family hardly recognised the tall young soldier being farewelled by his friends. Arthur returned to the farm and once again his niece Bertha went to visit during the school holidays. A flock of bantams now foraged in the yard. Arthur showed Bertha how to feed and care for them, and they soon followed her everywhere. Arthur never talked much about the war, but one day he said to his niece, I want to tell you a story. About a bantam I called Bertha. The End This story was written in memory of Jennifer Beck's great-uncle, Herbert Arthur Brewer, who was killed in action the 7th of June, 1917. 
This story is also dedicated in memory of Robin Belton's grandfathers who served in the Great War. Their names were Hugh Alexander Anderson and Cecil George Bignall. And to the memory of their sons, Peter Gorbel Bignall, Flight Sergeant, Frederick Hugh Anderson, Pilot Officer, James Pellew Anderson, Lance Corporal, who died in active service in the Second World War.